Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. Zach, I'm not going to give anybody else a chance. Why don't you come on up here? Well, thank you all for inviting me here to speak for you today. Uh, I want to just get right to the point. The 2014 elections really sucked, right? They were kind of awful. Nationally, Republicans padded their majority in the U.S. House, and the GOP picked up pretty much every competitive U.S. Senate seat uh, to take a majority in that chamber. We didn't fare much better here, either. Of course, we lost uh, Tim's U.S. Senate seat in the, all the other statewide races as well. While we did gain one seat in the state Senate, we lost five in the state house. It was pretty tough for all of us who gave so much of our time, talent, and treasure. But if you're looking for answers from me or explanations, you're going to be disappointed today. I don't really have them. I can promise you we are going to dig deep into the data when we get the voter file back from the Secretary of State. So we know exactly who didn't turn out. Uh, and we're going to, in fact, send a survey out to all our donors, our volunteers, and our candidates and county officers to figure out where you folks want us to go to as a state country. Because we do want to hear from you. You folks lead the party. Uh, but we knew, we knew when Deb became chair uh, mid last year, that this was going to be a tough election that many of the stars really were aligning against us. Uh, but we knew we had to make investments in our party uh, to build a party that lasts. And that's been a top priority of Deb Connect as chair and the top priority of mine as executive director. What are we going to do to build a party that lasts, that doesn't depend on having uh, a top dog top benefactor helping us out. So I want to share the, the, that work with you all today. I'm going to share with you all the state of the state party after this election cycle. And I'm actually very pleased to share that the state of the state party is alive and thriving and growing. And we've made big investments in finance, in field, and in our future leaders so that we can build a party that lasts this election cycle and many election cycles to come. So first I want to talk about finance, our fundraising operation. As many of you know, being members of our party for a long time, this state party has been in pretty bad shape in election cycles in the past. You probably all have heard the stories. Five to six figures in debt, being forced to lay off state party employees. A struggling to keep some of our best employees from leaving because of low pay. One thing Deb Connect wanted to do as our chair is stop that cycle at its terms. And the number one way we could do it is to rebuild our Founders Club program, the thing Ann talked about earlier. The program that George McGovern started as his very first act as Executive Secretary in the early 50s. George McGovern knew if you could get enough sustaining donors into the state Democratic Party, you could hire staff, you could barnstorm the state to organize the counties, and you could identify leaders to lead your county parties and to become your candidates who lead this party forward. When Deb Connect started this chair, we were only getting $1,937 a month from sustaining monthly donors. Frankly, not that much money. You can't hire a full-time staffer on that, a field director or someone who can barnstorm the state. Uh, and you can barely cover mileage if you're going across the state on that kind of thing. Well, since that period of time, we have grown our Founders Club contributions, monthly contributions, to $6,700 a month from 159 Founders Club members, many of whom are in this room today. These are folks who give between a uh, giving level of $3 a month to $300 a month. 
you're the lifeblood of this, this party. That's what allows us to hire the best finance director in the state with Zach Nelson, the best field director in the state with Ryan Wilson. I was just doing a lot of good work. And I'll tell you this much too. Fundraising is a lot easier when you're not asking folks to give money just to keep the lights on, right? Just to pay rent. And as a result, our one-time uh, donation program has also doubled in this period of time. In fact, we raised $426,000 in this election, this year alone. Double what we projected to raise for this election cycle. And it's those contributions, whether it was mail, where we thought we were just gonna raise probably $12,000 from mail, we nearly raised $30,000 in our monthly mail program. We thought we are probably gonna raise $70,000 for events. Oh, with great events like McGovern Day this year with our tribute to Tim, we've raised $95,000 from events. And then just call time, getting on the phones and talking to people, doing one-on-ones, uh, making sure we're asking for money every day from everyone we talk to. We've been able to double that, that, uh, don that one-time donation program. We've been able to do a lot of really cool things with that money, too. We didn't waste it, we spent it frugally. And we spent it right in our field efforts this year. And that's number two. What have we done for field? Well, first and foremost, one of the first things we did was decide to spearhead the initiated Measure 18 to raise the minimum wage with our friends in the labor community. And that was not easy either. We had 60 days to get 15,000 signatures from registered voters across the state just to put it on the ballot. And you all really stepped up to the plate on that. You did. In fact, in those 60 short days, we hired 10 organizers, recruited 500 volunteers. Many of you folks circulated petitions to raise the minimum wage. And we filed 26,556 signatures. And as a result of that hard work, Allied organizations raised $400,000 for the effort. And 150,000 South Dakotans, 55% of the electorate, said yes on initiated Measure 18. And as a result of that work, 62,000 South Dakotans are going to earn more because you folks said, we need to get this on the ballot. We need to raise a minimum wage. So give yourselves a round of applause. Rest assured, Republicans were not going to put that on the ballot and pass it, right? That was because of us and our hard work that we did together. The other thing we did is, of course, we want to invest in candidates. We want to invest in candidates who work hard, too. Uh, we set up in 2012, actually, a mail program for candidates who reach our goals. We say, if you raise enough money to be competitive, if you knock enough doors to be competitive, we want to give you free rounds of mail so you can reach the voters you need. And I don't care if you're in the most Democratic district or the most Republican district. Candidates who work hard have a better chance of winning than candidates who don't. It's that simple. We want to reward that hard work. And in fact, because so many of our candidates did hit those goals, we did 32 rounds of free mail at an expense of $48,000 for the state party for our legislative candidates this year. And of course, we know that a rising tide lifts all boats, too. We know Democrats have a turnout problem, apparently in midterms here and across the country. We tried to do something to change that. So we decided to make a significant five-figure investment in a GOTV phone program to make sure that every single Democrat in this state was contacted and made a plan to vote. And in fact, we had specific targets, too. We generally have a pretty good sense of who's likely to turn out to vote and who's not. And in fact, that information has become all the more targeted with you know, big data and things of that nature, right? So we know folks in this room, you guys probably, you're probably going to vote, right? You don't need a reminder. But we did try making uh, one or two calls to folks like you, too. But we know there are lots of folks who really do need a reminder. They don't need to be reminded once or twice. They need to be reminded 
multiple times. And they need to make a plan to vote. They need to get it in their head. When am I going to get to the polls? How am I going to get there? What is this day going to be like for me? What is my work schedule like? And we walk them through a plan-making process to get to the polls. And we contacted those voters five times in the four days leading up to the election. Now, we knew we had to make event, uh, investments this election cycle in that kind of field effort, right? To try our best to make a difference. But we also knew we had to invest in the future, too. The number one thing I've always heard coming to places like Forum and across the state is, you know, a simple question. Where are the young people in our party? Why aren't they getting involved? And we listened to you guys. We did. We listened to you all. And that's why in 2013 we started the first ever Young Elected Legislative Leaders Program. Something I've talked several times about here uh, for Forum. It's a mock legislative session for high school Democrats uh, who come to peer. They draft bills, debate legislators, and decide issues on the state senate floor. It's a lot of fun. Uh, in 2013, we had 28 students participate. We were excited about that. In 2014, this year, we had just shy of 50 students participate. And we asked those students, tell us about the experience. What did you enjoy about it? What did you not enjoy about it? What can we do better? And they told us they didn't want their participation to stop at the retreat. They wanted the participation to continue. They wanted to make a difference in elections. And so we listened to them, too. And we created the first ever Yale Fellows Program, which matched these young Yale graduates with candidates to help those candidates with the needs of their campaign, whether that was drafting a campaign plan or a budget or just help knocking doors and doing data entry, or helping with an online program. And we had 24 students participate in the Yelp program. And only two dropped out, which kind of surprised me. We knew these investments in Yelp Fellows was going to not only help our candidates uh, compete, but it was going to give young people an opportunity to make a difference. And moreover, and I think this is the biggest investment we can make, it's going to give those young people the bug, right? They're going to stay involved. And my hope is with the training we gave them on these campaigns and the experience they developed, one day they too are going to be running for office and leading this party. And of course, one of the other things we did is we started a county party program, something that unfortunately for lack of bandwidth we just didn't have a lot of time uh, uh, to pursue but one thing of course we want to do is barnstorm this state identify those leaders and more importantly train those leaders on how to run a strong county party got to raise money recruit candidates register voters do outreach those kind of things right and so often at least I've, I've experienced county party leader uh, steps up do they have any idea what they're supposed to do? What their roles are? Has anyone ever given them a guidebook or held their hand through the process? Many times that answer is no. Well, we want to change that, and that's one of the things we'll be doing going forward. But there were a lot of other things that made me really proud this election cycle. And we really did have great candidates uh, running at all levels of office. Denny, of course, for state treasurer. Uh, with Karina, state house. Rick, visiting every town across the state, and Susan and Susie making history with their bid for governor and lieutenant governor. I, at the end of this election, despite the results, I saw more fire and enthusiasm from people in this party than I've seen since I moved back in 2005. It was really, really impressive. And of course, I took a certain level of enjoyment, you know, beating the hell out of Mike Browns and the EB-5 citizenship <laughs> yeah. for sales game, right? We called it the South Dakota Democratic Party Department of Criminal Investigation. <laughs> and we produced a lot of paper. We did a lot of due diligence uh, that truly forced voters to question Mike Brown's character. And they did. And he saw at the polls. I mean, Mike, this was supposed to be a coronation. Mike Brown's was supposed to be crowned. And in 
late September to mid-October, this polling numbers just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. I wish it stayed there, <laughs> but it didn't, unfortunately. So I just wanted to tell you, these, these are the nuts and bolts of the state party. We are building a stronger foundation for a party that lasts. We are building our Founders Club program so that our ongoing expenses are matched by our ongoing revenue. And so every additional dollar we raise can go to great initiatives like our initiative measure to raise the minimum wage. So they can go into investments in GOTV, get out the vote. So we can invest in future leaders like the Yale Fellows Program. Do I wish the outcome of the election was different? Absolutely, we all do, don't we? And like I said, I, I don't have all the answers. And I want to hear from you folks what, what more you want, to see, want us to see us do. But I'll tell you this much. We can't stop the things we're doing right now. We have to keep building. If you're not a Founders Club member, we need you to sign up. We need you to sign up for the Founders Club. If you haven't uh, made a contribution or you didn't take a petition for the initiated measure, we need you to volunteer too. And we need you to stick with us. Because once we put these pieces of the puzzle together, it's only a few more pieces before we get the full picture. And we need to keep building and we need to stick together. So thank you all so much for the work you've done. And I'm happy to take some questions now. a comment in terms of the I think there were a lot of people very confused about where they were supposed to vote mm -hmm. I, and I have a friend specifically that told me she went to one place and they said no you go here she said I went there and they said no you go here so it took her three places and she said she was going to quit after mm -hmm. the third time if and I have heard other people say that seems to be just in, in Minnehaha County where we're having troubles huh I wonder, wonder why that could be <laughs> Yeah. No, that's, uh, you, you're exactly right. And I think uh, one thing we try to do in our GOTV materials is put the correct polling location for our voters on those materials. We need to do more of that, obviously. Uh, and of course, it would be nice if we had some help from the county auditor's office, too. Exactly. Right. And that keep changing it around. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, they don't. An observation from an old guy. <laughs> think of an election as being a learning process, you want to believe that would involve robust delay, uh, debates, you know, in all kinds of forums. Well, and we've got wonderful debate coaches, Jim and Ann and so on. So, the other side, I, you know, I think we're too intellectual. The other side has seven words that makes a difference. Democrats are the party of tax and spend. Why can't we have a short message that really is directed at the other side that would, because people, they hear that, oh my God, if you let Democrats in, all of a sudden my taxes are going to go up. I mean, they don't understand the issue of fees and all the other ways that monies are raised by government and that the, the, the Republicans are actually hurting them. But why can't we have a message in just a few words that creates some knowledge against the other party? Well, I'll tell you, look, their job is made a lot easier, too, and they can point their finger at the president and blame all the problems on him, too.
<laughs> also, we, what we should know is that oil is the gold. Fuel is the gold rule. That's the gold rule. Now, Saudi Arabia lost 50% of its market share in the United States in the last six months. Saudi broke the opening rules and they're talking about it. Is there a question? What's the question? Well, the, the thing I, I have is that people have to be educated on issues. The oil situation is simply run by the cooks for the cooks. And they've convinced the American people, not telling them that they're, they're going to gain hundreds of billions of dollars. And, and if, we, if that had been made rounds of an attack on, on that basis, South Dakota people would understand that. What they don't understand is how can they Apparently, if come out for same-sex marriage in South Dakota, I'm thinking you win. I mean, that's a joke. We tried abortion, but that didn't work either. Well, I was just going to add, because to one person, Doug, when they, that's the thing you always hear, we're tax and spend. So I said to that person in response, we tax and spend wisely. And then go into what Democrats do. I mean, we believe in, in, in feeding the poor. So when Christy Noll wants to cut more on food stamp program, we need to educate her and, and respond to statements like that of how we spend wisely. But our people are so dumb. I Why know. We have a great suspicion on the other side. <laughs> how much money did the party take in this year and how much did you spend? How much do you have left over? Uh, I'm proud to report that we raised uh, just shy of $650,000, and we still have $50,000 in the bank to immediately start investing. Uh, this is just the nuts and bolts, but uh, I've, for the last four years, I, I've been bringing my, uh, I don't the founders check in, you know it, you can verify that, uh, you know, the equivalent of about $10 a month. But I just write it out, and, uh, I don't, I don't feel uh, warmth and happiness. Um, I mean, to me, as treasurer of this organization, I'll take the money up front anytime I can get it. I mean, I'm in your office January 1st or 2nd. And I, I, here, take my check. And I just have to say, you want me to tie myself even more closely with a bank that I am disgusted with. <laughs> And so it's extracting uh, $10 every month. And, I, and I, I know I gotta get to the question. I, I just wanna say, I, I have been criticized for a lot of things, but this was the most beautiful criticism Ann and I probably could ever have. We are too intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you can criticize me anytime you want. But anyway, why can't I feel love and happiness when I go in and to make a deposit? Why can't I get little buttons like this anymore? And why can't I go to the head of the line at uh, McGovern Day because, no, no. No, I have to have special permission to get in because I don't do it through the bank. Why is the damn bank so important? <laughs> well, Jim, you're the warmest, happiest guy I know. How could I ever match that? It's an unfair comparison. Uh, the Founders Club program is a sustaining donor program, which we rely on to actually build the budget, right? Uh, and I will tell you, it's, it's the same conversation we have about schools in this state. How can you build a budget if you don't know when the money's coming in or whether it's going to come in at all? Some donors like you, Jim, reliably give your $100 uh, a month. And, and we're floored and you know, entirely grateful for it, of course. But there are some donors who tell us, who tell us they give $100 a, a year. And they say, well, didn't I already give you that $100? You say, your last contribution was in 2006, man. Come on. You know? Uh, when we have the sustaining donor program, we know the money's coming in so we can immediately put it to use. So we can budget for it. So that I can say, you know what? I do want a voter registration uh, official. I do want a native vote director. Unless I know the money's coming in, I can't send it out. I thought that our uh, description of the Republican Party is uh, the party of no, but I 
was struck by was one knocking on doors. And I thought that the Democrats have always had a lot of support in the middle class and working class. But I would, was sent to a large uh, trailer park. And it struck me that I probably didn't uh, knock on 5% of the doors. Mm -hmm. Because I, I was told which ones to go mm -hmm. to because those were registered Democrats. And I just wondered why weren't more of those folks registered Democrats. I would go into a large apartment house and maybe have three That's days. They fantasize about being uh, rich. And, and I went to and several to apartment houses rich. like that. And I just thought, I would think that a lot of those folks ought to be in supporting the uh, Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. But it reminded me what, what he was saying, uh, the book, what What's the matter with Kansas? Mm -hmm. I think uh, the voters really don't understand, you know, uh, the difference in the two parties. Yeah, I, I think that's that's obvious. Could I chime in on that? Having uh, gone to a lot of trailer parks and apartment complexes in the last two election cycles, I love Boat Builder. I use it all the time, but not when I go into a trailer park or an apartment complex. Then I knock on every door and I always have my voter registration with me. And you sign them up at the door if you find them at home. They're working people. Most of them have two jobs. You have to come back to those doors a couple times. It's not a perfect system, but that's what you have to do in those areas because that's where there's a lot of turnover. Vote Builder is based on people that have registered to vote and voted in the last election cycle. So you've got all that turnover in that kind of housing. That's right. And Scott's been waiting for a long time. I was just going to respond to what she was saying. Uh, at two, at Minnehaha County Commission's Tuesday meeting, they decided they're going to form a seven-person citizen panel to review elections, and they're going to be appointing them within two weeks. And um, I can say this. The county is doing the, the election correctly. They're using precincts. So... You have, you go to your precinct, there's one ballot at the precinct, they hand that one ballot out to you. They're, they're getting stuff mixed up, there's problems there. The problem is, is that the city and the school district have this fantasy in their mind that we need to save money on elections, okay? And so that's why they like the super precincts and the polling centers, because they can save money. And they refuse to work with the county to do this. In fact, the last time Lori Hogstead, the city clerk, um, talked about this. Some One of the counselors asked her, are we ever going to work with the county and the school district to be all on the same page? And she arrogantly said, no. We're going to keep doing it the way we're doing it. We don't, the county can do it the way they want to do it. So the problem is they're not getting on the same page. So I hopefully this panel addresses that when they come with their recommendations of what needs to be changed and I hope that one of their first recommendations is damn it let's all get in the room together and be on the same page for elections in Minnehaha County because it's not it's not working now it's total confusion so well, I, I wanted to add something on to Scott and there and actually John Peck has brought it up very well in that County Commission meeting but that we have a situation where Sioux Falls crosses the, the county borders here and so if we were to go to vote centers not only uh, would we be eliminating a lot of the lower income people from being able to transport themselves to these polling centers we would also now add the complication of having Lincoln County residents thinking they can come to the vote centers in Sioux Falls and now instead of having 70 People that would normally be in Minnehaha County with 71 precincts, and then you have uh, down in Lincoln County, you have 30 precincts trying to come in and sort out all of those different ballots so that somebody that's down in Hudson might think, well, I work in Sioux Falls, I should be able to vote in Sioux Falls because it's a voting center for Lincoln County. And now you're going to have to figure out how you're going to separate all these different voting centers in this conglomeration of people and it's, it's not going to work. And there's no way that 
that the, that the staff in Canton or the staff in the Sioux Falls auditor's offices are ever going to straighten this out. On the positive side, we got a good win with the minimum wage. Congress is considering the minimum wage, and if we can show a red state like South Dakota, where a higher percentage of Republicans voted the Democrats and we still passed it, you congressmen might lose your job if you don't pass it. If we can take our win and make it go national, then something will get out. Exactly right. We weren't the only state, red state, that did that too. Arkansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, Alaska. Big wins on minimum wage. Our issues aren't stale. And the issues are good and people stand with us. Uh, it's going to take a lot of hard work, boots on the ground, phone calls, to make sure the people know who's fighting for the issues they care about. And it's Democrats who are fighting the race minimum wage. Susan, Susan. So, um, first of all, I'm glad to hear about all the things you're doing to build the party so that it isn't just collapsed when a bad election. So, thanks for that. Um, I was disappointed in the seeming lack of nonprofit uh, infusions into this state to move that minimum wage uh, initiative forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad it passed, but it really lost a lot of its margin of success from sure. the early polling at the time that you were do circulating the petitions, mm -hmm. which means the opposition really did make inroads. Yeah. And it seemed like that boots on the ground from all these nonprofit interest groups that was supposed to happen just never happened. Could you explain <coughs> what happened? Why yeah, that was? I think simply the Senate race wasn't close until late. And some of these, you know, interest groups uh, also want to make a difference at top of the ticket races. And so until the race got close, they didn't come in. And you saw that with national money flooding into the state in the last four weeks, basically. And too late to do boots on the ground. Too late to do boots on the ground. Uh, which is why, of course, uh, our, our friends in education, the National Education Association, they actually spent $250,000 here in the state on the minimum wage ballot measure, sending mail, doing uh, get out the vote calls, uh, across the state, uh, according to their public records, of course. But they, uh, at a certain point, you can't substitute phones for boots on the ground, you know? Lots of folks have cell phones nowadays. Lots of folks have moved. You need to actually talk to the people face to face. You need to do what, what Ann was talking about. Uh, you need to go to the apartment complexes, go to the trailer homes, and actually tell them your vote makes a difference for you. It gives you a raise. It helps your family. Uh, and that's what's going to make a difference, I think. Denny and then Mary Lou. I'm going to ask probably the hardest question I could ask. How do we fill out all the spots so that we're not leaving 30 or 40 legislative races empty? Uh, the state constitutional office, yep. offices, most of them empty. Yep. How do we change that? And do we start now? Yes. The answer is yes. You need to build from the bottom, bottom up, I, I truly believe. Uh, and that does start with strong county parties and strong party institutions, like Democratic Forum. Uh, Forum truly has recruited candidates and raised money for them, which helps candidates compete and helps them win. Uh, we need more institutions, you know, stronger county parties across the state. And I think that starts with, one, training current leaders, two, identifying new leaders and making sure they get trained, and making sure we're investing at the local level because it's local folks who know the best prospective candidates. And it's local folks who understand the local issue. It's not going to come from the top down. It's got to come from the bottom up. And that's one reason why I'm really excited about the county party program that we hope to be starting here at, at, you know, right away because we do need to, we can't be recruiting candidates three months before the election. We need to be recruiting candidates the day after the election. And we're committed to doing Mary Lou, last question. The only thing, I was just going to offer you what they did in Nebraska. They had people going church by church by mm -hmm. church on their deal. That's how come their votes are going to solidify. Plus, they're not going to have a governor that repeals it, which we're going to get stuck with here. Thank you. Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. Come on, let's go, come on.